you have a chance to talk to Will and, and the rest of our speakers after our Q&A when we're, we're finished up here. And, and Will mentioned disconnection. At the end of our Q&A, I'm going to read a couple letters from mothers whose uh, children have been disconnected from them. That's one of the big control issues in Scientology. One of the reasons, one of the ways they manage to keep you in is to threaten taking away all of your relationships with your, your loved ones, your, your parents, your children. And um, our, our next speaker actually has faced that. And she also got in at a very young age. Uh, Marine Boldstad is going to speak. Well, I've done a lot of uh, interviews already in front of cameras. This is the first time I've been in front of so many of them at the same time. Um, I'd like to first say that I currently have a situation where I've been disconnected from my own twin sister, and it's a very heart-wrenching and hurtful thing to me, and the whole reason why she's not allowed to talk to me or believes that she can't talk to me is because I left the C organization, and that's one of the things that keeps people in uh, once they join is if they have friends or family that are in, and there are their threat is always there that you're not going to be able to talk to your family or your friends anymore if you just walk out. And there's another option of where if you decide to leave, you can properly route out, which is where you do a series of steps that gives you the authorization to leave. Um, but then you'll have this debt, which is called a freeloader bill. You'll owe for all the services you got while you were a staff member and you won't be allowed to talk to anybody until you pay that. Um, but also, uh, you know, routing out it, it isn't always easy for everyone because, well, in my case, and I'm, I, I'm pretty sure this is why I was, like, saved for, for last, um, I asked to route out from the organization in um, February of, 1997, or, yeah, 1997, <coughs> and I was not allowed to. I basically was on the Rehabilitation Project Force, and um, I was told that I was not allowed to route out, and I was not allowed to leave. I was stuck there, and I had somebody watching me, always, 24 hours a day, I had to have a buddy with me. I had someone shining a flashlight in my face at night while I was sleeping every two hours to make sure I was still in bed. Um, on the few occasions that I did manage to run away, I was tackled and brought back physically. Uh, I mean, one of the men that tackled me was a guy named Chris Guider, who was an ex-professional Australian football player. He was big, and I, I couldn't go up against that. Um, but I, I kept trying. <laughs> um, one of the last uh, times on, on the RPF, uh, in, at the end of 1997, I, I got into a fight with one of the other RPFers, and he broke my hand on a table and smashed me into some bookshelves, and I was pretty bruised up. And I basically said, hey, I'm, you know, I'm fed up with this. If you guys don't let me out of here, I'm just going to stop eating and sleeping. And I'm just going to die because, you know, I wanted, wanted my freedom. <laughs> I didn't like being treated like a prisoner when I'd done absolutely nothing wrong besides, you know, not wanting to work there anymore for nothing. So um, that night... Uh, I was talked into, you know, it's okay, you can get some sleep. It doesn't mean that, you know, they were saying maybe they would talk to me the next day about why I wanted to leave and treat me nicer. So I, I actually went to bed. I didn't keep my, my thread of not sleeping or eating. And that night I, I actually was able to run away. I, uh, I heard the two people outside my door guarding it uh, walk away from it, and I had gone to bed dressed, and I... This is out in Hemet, at the place that they called the ranch, or Happy Valley, which is a, they don't own it anymore, but they used to own it near the uh, Saboba Indian Reservation. 
and I ran behind the Indians' houses so the security guards couldn't get me. But I was there was like a search party that went out for me. They even had a dog. They had a couple of trucks, a bunch of people just out at, it was like four or five in the morning trying to find me. And I, I made it all the way to my aunt's house. I hitched rides, I took the bus. And when I got to my aunt's house, um, uh, an official from uh, the Church of Scientology showed up at her house. Um, and they brought my sister. And uh, they said, uh, if you come back, yeah, sorry. I said, if you come back, you'll get to talk to your sister. You'll get to talk to your husband, and we'll, you won't have to do the rehabilitation project for us, and we'll treat you better, and made all these promises, and I wanted it to be true. But when I went back, I got stuck there for another three damn years. And my